Lesson two covers the flow of energy in an ecosystem and basically how energy moves through an ecosystem. So um, energy essentially for the earth all comes from one big hot place in the sky. And if you haven't figured that out yet, that's the sun. But we don't really get much of our energy from the sun um, directly but we get it indirectly. Um, essentially though, that is the energy source for our planet. So autotrophs are animal or are organisms, I'm sorry, that make their own food. So um, an autotroph usually are plants, although some type of plankton, uh, they can make their own food um, using photosynthesis. And then there are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are organisms that eat other things. So all of you are heterotrophs, meaning you eat other things So to get your food. So there's a few types of heterotrophs. One is called an herbivore. They only eat plants. And one is called a carnivore. And carnivores eat animals. So a lot of times what's left out of this mix and it is listed down here is omnivores omnivores are animals that eat um plants and animals so a lot of humans tend to be omnivores where they eat some plant-based food and some um, pro animal based food another type of up here heterotroph eating other things is a detritivore and detritivores basically eat things that are already dead in an ecosystem so what's the difference between a detritivore that eats dead things and a carnivore they're also eating dead things well the detritivores are like fungus where they didn't go out and kill um the animal or directly kill a tree or something like that in order to eat it um it was already dead usually and they just come and live on it and break it down and decompose it okay so there's different models or ways that we have of showing how uh energy moves through the ecosystem one way is to draw a food chain. A food chain usually goes just like a chain, one link to the next link to the next link to the next link. So here's a plant and it's eaten by the grasshopper. The grasshopper gets eaten by the mouse, which is an omnivore. Um, it'll eat like uh, animals and plants. And then it's eat, the mouse is eaten by a carnivore, which is this snake. Okay. So a food chain goes one direct way it's pretty simplistic it's sort of little kiddish um and you guys are kind of higher than that so this next one is called a food web and a food web shows all these things get eaten for instance by this coyote but um you know it also shows that the weasel, you know, the mouse, the kangaroo rat can get eaten by the snake or the coyote or the weasel. It'll show that things go in multiple directions, like this cactus is getting eaten by this ravenous tortoise. <laughs> I'm laughing because we have a tortoise. Um, and then here's, you know, the, the, Whiptail lizard maybe gets eaten by the rattlesnake, but then the rattlesnake gets eaten by the raven. And so it kind of shows how things go in different directions, uh, like how these grasses are getting eaten by the jackrabbits. So it's a little more complicated. That is called a food web. This is where you guys are getting to now. Is in ecological pyramids, they're so complicated. Okay. So here's how an ecological pyramid works. I don't really like these drawings. So I've also uploaded some other videos 
um, showing you uh, pyramids so that you can hopefully understand them a little bit better. But basically, with each level that you move up a pyramid, you only have 10% of the energy left that was at the bottom. So in an ecological pyramid, if you have 100% of the energy is in the primary producers, let's say in the grass, okay, in a meadow, it's the grass, and 100% of the energy is there, then things that directly eat the grass are 90% fewer than the grass itself as far as the biomass. Like if you put it all together, the the grass would be 10 times larger than the small little crickets or grasshoppers that actually just eat the grass. So, so much smaller, 90% smaller so that only 10% is left. And then of the things that eat the little crickets and grasshopper, that is decreased by 90%. So this 10%, um, this 10% is reduced down to 1%. So we went from 100% down to 10%. We removed a zero. Then we removed another zero and got down to 1% on this level. And the things that are the very smallest that eat those, the very top level um, consumers are actually remove or divide it basically by 10 again. So you, now you're putting a decimal point um, and having 0 0.1 is how much energy is left here. So each level decreases greatly as you move down the line. Okay. So I want to have you watch the extra videos that explains this again, because I think you all need some help on that. Um, and we have some questions at the end of the chapter that go over that.